Hi everyone. So in this video, I will be discussing about representation of a graph. If you have some doubts regarding the terminologies that are used in a graph or the basic concepts of a graph, I suggest you watch my previous video. That will act as a strong foundation of what we are about to discuss in this video and in the subsequent videos. So let's get started. So in the previous video, we discussed about the basic concepts of a graph, what are edges, what are vertices, what is a connected graph, directed graph, uh, and all these terminologies that are used. So after having that, those things cleared, so now we have to discuss about the graph representation. So what is meant by representation is, what are the various techniques that are available to store the graph in the computer memory? So the techniques that are available to store a graph are first one is the adjacency matrix, then is the adjacency list, and the third one is incidence matrix. Now each have their own pros and cons, and the choice basically depends on the type of operation that we have to perform in that program. So maybe a program mainly focuses on querying whether an edge exists or not, or whether a vertex exists or not, or we are adding or removing vertices or edges on the fly. So based on all these factors, we have to decide that which representation of a graph we'll use. So I've decided uh, to split this graph representation part into multiple videos. So in this video, I will be focusing on the adjacency matrix part. First, we'll understand the concept and then we'll try to code it and then see what is the agency matrix that is printed. So what is agency matrix? So basically it is a 2D matrix of size V into V. So when I talk about V, V is the number of vertices in the graph. So if a graph has four vertices, then the size of the matrix will be four into four. The data that will be present in this matrix will be either one or zero. So one will represent whether there is an edge from the row vertex to the column vertex. And zero will represent that there is no edge from row vertex to the column vertex. Let me show you an example. So we have five nodes, A, B, C, D, and E, and we have some edges. So this is an undirected graph. First, we'll understand how we can draw the adjacency matrix for an undirected graph. And we have a loop starting from B and ending at B. So the first step is we write all the vertices uh, column-wise and row-wise. So we have wrote A, B, C, D, E here and we have written same A, B, C, D, E. So basically we have five nodes, so we have a five into five matrix. So first we'll check from row to column whether that exists, that edge is present or not. So we'll f start with this A to A. So A to A, no edge is present. So as no loop is there, so we have to put an entry of zero. Then we say A to B. So A to B, edge is present. So we put an entry of one. Then we check A to C. A to C, no edge is present, so we put it zero. Then A to D, A to D, no edge is present, so we put it zero. Now A to E, so A to E is present, so we put one here. So the first row is complete. Now we proceed to the second row, and now we check for B to A. So we pick the second row, we pick this element, and then pick this element. So we check whether an edge exists from B to A. Since this is undirected graph, so A to B and B to A both will count. So B to A is also existing, so we'll add one here. Then we check from B to B. So there is a self loop starting from B and ending at B. So this will count as an edge. So we'll enter one here. Next is B to C. So we can see an edge is present here, so we'll enter one here. Next is B to D. B to D edge is also present, so we enter one here. Then B to E. B to E edge is also present. So we enter one here. So second row is also complete. Now we proceed to the next row. So first we start with C. So we pick this and we pick the first column. C to A. C to A. No edge is present. So we enter zero. C to B. C to B. Edge is present. So we enter one here. C to C. No loop is there. No self. Edge is present. So we enter zero. C to D, edge is present, so we enter 1. And C to E, we enter 0. So similarly like this, for all the combinations, we'll enter 1 or 0. 1 means an edge is present, 0 means edge is not present. So what is a weighted, what if this is a weighted graph? So in the last video we discussed, a weighted graph is when each edge has a certain weight. So let's say this edge has weight 5. 
this edge has width 3, this edge has width 2, this edge has width 1, this has 6, this one has 7, this one has 2, and this one has 1. So how will this matrix change? So it is quite simple. So the zero entries will remain zero because there is no edge present. So in and instead of wherever we have put one, we have to put the edge weight of the edge. So if we check from A to B, it is one five. So instead of one, we have to enter five here. Now A to C, A to D will remain same. A to E, A to E. So the weight is one three. So we'll enter three here. So B to A, B to A, it's 5, so we'll enter 5 here. B to B, it's 1, so it, it will remain 1. B to C, it is 2, so we'll enter 2 here. B to D, it is 6, so we'll enter 6 here. B to E, so B to E is 1, so we'll put 1 here. This will remain 0, C to B, C to B is 2. C to D is 7, D to B is 6, D to C is 7, D to E is 2, E to A is 3, E to B is 1, and E to D, E to D is 2. So if this is a weighted graph, the green one will, will be the answer. If this is a unweighted graph, then the values in the black are the edges matrix. And let's say this is a directed graph, so how will things change? So the only difference here will be in a directed graph. So the edge A to B. So it means the edge is from A to B. So for A to B, we'll put the 1 because the weights are not present. So we'll put 1 or 0. So A to B, we have put 1. But for B to A, we'll put 0 because the edge is from A to B. So similarly for B to C, we can see the edge weight should be 1. But for C to B, it should be 0. For C to B, it is 0. Similarly, D to C it is 1, but C to D as there is no edge present, so it will be 0. So like this, there is not much difference, but only you have to consider the direction of the edge. So in that way, you can draw the adjacency matrix for the directed graph. So now what are the advantages that we have for this representation of a graph? So first one is quite obvious that it is very easy to understand and implement. So just have to create a matrix and put the entries of 0 or 1 or instead of 1 we put the weight. So it is quite easy to understand also and implement also. So second advantage is adding removing an edge takes order of one time. So if you see in the previous agency matrix if I remove this edge B to C edge I remove. So how will this matrix change? So it will be quite simple instead of so I'll just go to the entry of B to C, so it is this one, I will just replace this one by 0. And if I add one more edge, let's say from A to D, if I add one more edge, so how will this change? So, so if A to D, so I, it will be 1 here. So adding and removing an edge is very simple in this representation. So it takes only single operation because we have to just put 1 or 0 in that particular entry of the matrix. Third advantage that we have is if there is some query that we need to find out that if there is an edge present from a particular vertex to another vertex, then that is also very efficient. So let's say someone says to you to find out whether there is an edge exists from B to D. So this one, if it is present or not. So what you will do is just simply go to the matrix, check for B, B row and check for the D column. You will find out it is one, so edge is present. If someone says for B to A, you go to B, you check the A column, it is 0, so edge is not present. So to querying whether an edge is present or not in this kind of a matrix is very easy. It takes just one read operation, so it is order of 1. These were the advantages that we have in this kind of representation. Now what are the disadvantages? So the number one disadvantage that you can think of, it consumes a lot of space. So even if the graph is sparse it consumes the same space so let's say what do you mean by sparse so sparse means when the number of edges are quite small compared to the number of vertices so let's say we have 10 vertices and let's say only four edges but in this case also we'll have to 
a draw matrix of 10 by 10 because we have to point out all the different vertices that we have in the graph so we'll waste a lot of memory because the all most of the entries present in the graph will be zero because there are only four edges but it will take a lot of space so it is a problem because if the graph size keeps on increasing and if especially if the graph is sparse then we are necessarily wasting a lot of space so that is the number one disadvantage that we can that is present in this kind of a representation and the second disadvantage that we have is adding or removing a vertex is very costly so in terms of time so adding or removing a vertex is order of v square so let's find out why it is order of v square so let's say you have let's say you have this graph and someone says to you you have to add a particular vertex f so if you have to add a vertex in this kind of a matrix so what you will have to do is basically you have to create a new row and you have to take a new column so basically you have to rep make a copy of this entire 2d array and add in and increase the size by one row and one column and then place it all again so it will take a lot of operation you first copy it then you create increase the size and then copy these values again so it is a costly operation so if you even if you add a single vertex then it will take number of vertices into vertices time so v into v time order of v square so due to these two advantages sometimes uh, we need to think of whether this is the apt representation that we require for the for our program once we have the concept clear let's look at the code so i'll be using c plus plus and the graph that i'll be using is the same one which i've shown earlier so instead, only instead of using um, the alphabets A, B, C, D, E, I'll be using uh, numeric values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 so that they can be easily represented in the 2D array. So now let's have a look at the code. So the code is uh, quite simple. Uh, I just initialize a 2D array uh, with value 0. So the size of the array is V into V. V I have defined as 5. So basically I've created a 2D array of size 5 into 5 then i add all the edges so i created a function add edge in which i pass this 2d array and this source and the start function source and the end function so you can see here 0 to 1 and 0 to 4 so if you see in the diagram here we can see there's an edge from 0 to 1 and 0 to 4 so similar like this all the edges i have passed in this function so all the edges will be created and in this function i am initializing this edge to 1 so by default all the edges were initialized to 0 and here I'll just initializing the edges which are present in the graph to 1 and after adding all the edges we can simply print the adjacency matrix so now let's look what is the output so we can see that the matrix is printed like this and it is the same that we have discussed so that was all for this video in the next video I'll be explaining about the adjacency list and the incidence matrix so if you like my content do like share and subscribe to my channel and until the next time this is sandeep thapar signing off